Hi, my name is Rob Earlham, Senior Developer Advocate here at Sitecore, and this is the next video in a series introducing some of the key concepts for Sitecore Search. We recently implemented Sitecore Search on the Developer Portal, and this series is going through some of the steps involved in that. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the React SDK we used on this build. So, let's dive in. So what is the React SDK? And why did Sitecore create it? Well, it's designed for developers working in React or React-based frameworks like Next.js and allows you to quickly integrate Sitecore Search into your website experience. It's based on two different NPM packages. So the first is called React and provides the main base functionality of the SDK. And the second is called the UI package. And that contains all of the different UI composites that you can use to build out the different experiences. So how do you get started with the SDK? Well, the first step is to install these two NPM packages into your project. After that, you need to wrap your React application in the widget provider component. And that provides the majority of the SDK's functionality. You'll notice there's also a search config object being passed in here. Now this object contains a series of properties that are used to tie your application to the correct search instance on the back end. Each of these values can be found in the search admin platform, the CEC, and we recommend storing these values in environment variables to stop the risk of them leaking out. So once you've integrated the SDK into your React application, you can start to build out this really rich search-based functionality into your site. On the developer portal, we're using a preview search component, which you can see on the left, and also the full search component, which you can see on the right. We'll take a look at both of these in a minute, but I just want to quickly talk about extension points and how you can go about customizing search when building these different types of widgets. There will be times when you need to customize the data that's coming back from the search platform. And the SDK provides the ability to do this by tailoring the query that you actually send in. And you can see this in the code sample on the right. Some good examples of why you'd want to do this would be only searching a subset of sources in certain scenarios, uh, in a previous video, I talked about filtering, and this is one of the ways you can achieve that. Say, for example, you only want to display a certain type of results in a certain site section, then you can extend the query in this way. On the developer portal, we're refining by the sources being searched, and are also using key phrase highlighting in the return data to highlight where those key phrases you entered actually appear in the search results data. So let's fire up the developer portal and its related code base and see how all of this has been implemented. Okay, so I've loaded up the repo for the dev portal. This is built using Next.js and it's based on Turbo, which is a framework designed to handle mono repos. So let's start to take a look at how this has been configured to leverage the SDK for search. As I said, it's built with Turbo, so we have a few different apps in here. I'm gonna load up the dev portal first. And the first thing we're gonna do is take a look inside the package JSON. If we look in here, you can see that we're referencing the two NPM packages I just talked about before, the React package, which contains most of the base functionality for the SDK and the UI package, which contains all of the UI primitives we're gonna be working with. Now, before we dive into how the SDK is leveraged directly, I just wanna talk about one of the library classes that was created to help us work with it. If we go and look in our search class here, here we can see we have a variety of different constants that are exported. The first one is the search config. Remember we talked about that needed to be passed into the widget provider. And you can see we have all of our different properties being pulled in from environment variables. So we have a variant for the environment being called, the customer key, and the API key. Another key export we have in here is this is search enable property. What this basically allows us to do is to have a common way to check whether we're enabling search when running locally, meaning that we can easily disable it if someone doesn't have the environment variable set. So if any of those environment variables are missing, this search enabled flag will be false and we just toggle off the search functionality, meaning that if someone doesn't have access to those ABI keys, they can still run this repo locally. That's really important for us as this is an open source repository and not everyone running it will actually have access to the search backend. Okay, so now we've discussed that, let's start to see how it's integrated. The first starting point, as I mentioned, is to wrap our whole application in the widget provider component. So with Next.js, the easiest place to do that is in the app.tsx file. You'll see we're not actually doing this directly. 
what we've created here is another constant called the search wrapper. We're using that is search enabled constant to check whether it's been enabled or not. And if so, we then use the widget provider. If it hasn't been enabled, then we just directly use the children. That means we can then wrap our whole application inside this search wrapper component, and it'll either insert the widget provider if needed, or if it's not been configured, then it won't actually include it in. A really nice way to toggle on and off pretty much all of the SDK functionality. Once you've set that up, you can actually start to create components with it. Um, let's start by taking a look at our preview search component. I'm going to go into our components folder, integrations, cycle search, and then we have our preview search input. If we take a look in here, there's, there's a lot going on. But basically, I'm just going to scroll down and highlight some of the key features. We can see here we're starting to use a lot of these UI primitives. So things like the nav menu content, nav menu list, nav menu item, all of these are components which are pulled in from the UI NPM package. If I look up to the top here, we can see nav menu, act article cards, presence, all coming out of this UI NPM package. So all these component primitives are all provided for you. You can use these to then start to build out the actual logic for your application. So you can see here, we have a collection of articles and this is how they're all going to be rendered. In here we have code to handle like events. We have code to open URLs when they're clicked on. And we basically build out the UI of the PV search component. One of the key interesting pieces though, is where the actual requests made. And that's further down here. So here's where we actually start to build the preview search input component that we're going to be dropping into our page. So we basically have this piece of code here, which handles everything about making the request over into search to the API to get the search data back. And then we build up a set of constants. So things like the actions are how we're handling our on click event or on key phrase changes. You know, we have a result that's coming back, you know, whether the data is currently being fetched, whether it's loading, and then the data structure itself. So we have articles that are returned, and then we have article suggestions and name suggestions. In here is where we start to extend our query, as we talked about before. So you can see we, we're basically defining the query objects, and here we start to add our custom extensions. We add our custom search query highlighting. So remember before I said that we want in the results, the highlights of the key phrases to be bold on the actual search results page. This is how we do that. We're basically searching the description field, and then we're going to wrap the key phrases in a strong tag, making it appear emphasized. We also have a restriction to set which data sources were being searched. This allows us to work in an offline mode and basically only enable the data source when it's ready to be published live. This index source is actually linked back to another environment variable that's been defined, which has an array of those index IDs that we want to search. If we go and take a look over at the search results page, we can see this is a pretty similar definition. We have references through to our React library up here, and from there, we then start to build out our results page. Scrolling down, you can see the first thing we do is to actually get our search results here, and it's much the same kind of logic we had before. We're building up our constants for the values we want to retrieve from the API. And again, you know, it's data on whether it's loading. We also have now things like the sort orders coming out because we need a sort order control here. Uh, the total number of items being returned, which is used to handle things like pagination. Just go a little further along, we can see we have our faceting data ready to come back as well. But again, you know, we're refining and adding our search term highlighting. We're refining by the sources that are actually added in there. In here, we have a little section at the top here to display a loading spinner while the results are being pulled in. And then after that, we go and we actually render out our results control. And there's some pretty common things you'll see here. We build a component to handle the faceting. So that facet data, which got passed back from the API, we pass it into our facet component. We have our sort component in here as well. Again, running from the sort information which came back from our API request. Then down here, we actually have our list of articles. So when these are all returned, we're basically mapping our article list into this list item object. And then from there, we build out the markup. So we have our li tag, and we have an anchor within there. 
And within that, we handle things like our click events, how to open the search results, and the actual data that's come back from the result itself. So we have the type in there. So whether it's a video, whether it's a article, whether it's a repository, we have the index name. So that shows where it's actually come from. So is this an, an article that's on the developer portal? Is it a YouTube video? Is it a GitHub repository? Is it on the documentation site? And you can see here well, how we're handling our highlighting uh, that's returned from the API. We check here whether the highlight section has been populated. And if it has, we output the result of the highlight object itself, because that'll contain the markup with those strong tags. If not, then we just output the description itself. There is no key phrase that was in the description itself, so we can just output the raw data. We then also have some logic tags, so we display videos slightly differently. And this basically allows you to define how each of the different search results are all rendered and shown through. Now there's a heap to look through in here, but what I wanna talk about quickly is also some of the supporting elements that are provided to help you along the way. I'm gonna hop over to the documentation site, and this is available at doc.sitecore.com. I just wanna quickly show some of the SDK documentation available here. If we go into the search docs, and then down to the integrate using search JS SDK for React, this is where you'll find all of the SDK documentation. So here you can see all the diagrams showing the data flowing between your application and the search API. And it has walkthroughs showing how to build out different components yourselves using all of the different SDK and UI primitive elements that are available to you. One of the key things I wanna show, which is really useful though, is if you go into this working with JS SDK and UI components, we have this link here for the search UI components reference. I click on that, that's gonna take me over to a Storybook instance. For those of you who haven't used Storybook before, this is a really useful resource, which allows you to go and get detailed information on a UI library. In our case, the UI NPM package. From here, you can actually start to see all of the different UI elements provided, and you can see how they've all been added together into fully featured pieces of functionality. I'm gonna go and load up this content section here. I'm just gonna take a look at the preview search and uh, if we take a look at the basic one here, this actually gives you a fully fledged preview search component to work with. If you look down here, you can see how you can install with the CLI. There is a CLI available for Sitecore Search. We're not gonna dig too much into that today, but you can see with a single command, you can generate a full component for preview search. If you take a look over at the manual tab, here you'll see steps to create one yourself by hand without using the CLI. If I expand the TypeScript code in here, it's gonna to start to look very familiar to what we had before. We have our articles collection. If we scroll down, here you can see we have our basic query being passed over to the API to get the data returned for us. Notice it's not adding the actual extensions, the customization of the query object. This is a really basic implementation which you can take and then build out to match your use case. I just want to finish off by talking through some of the supporting assets that are available when working through the SDK. Available today, we have a whole heap of supporting assets to help you get to your destination quicker. We have detailed documentation for the SDK and a storybook instance, showing you the different UI primitives that are available. We also have a series of sample repositories. Listed here first is the starter kit for the SDK. This is a fully functional search powered website that gives you a heap of different ways that you can implement search using the SDK itself. The second one is the repository for the developer portal, which is what we just looked at. Now you shouldn't be basing your code base off here, but this is a good real world example showing how we've leveraged search and the SDK to build out our live implementation. There's also a CLI available, which we didn't touch on too much today, but installing that NPM package allows you to generate components directly from the CLI, giving you a much quicker way to scaffold our experiences. You can find each of these links in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out the Discover Sitecore YouTube channel for future videos.